Hello, hello, and welcome back to Chord Progression. We're finally at our job, our place, where we will work. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're gonna meet new characters finally, right? Right. Oh. Okay. The skunk is quite a large man. I stand at average height, and he's a few inches taller. Perhaps he's around six foot two? He's quite plump and very pleasant, so each round pro pro protrusion? Okay. No, excuse me. Uh, protrusion of his uh, body. Uh, notable his chest, his belly, and his, his butt. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, seem to have all a delightfully per perkiness to them that feels so inviting. Good lord, chubby men like this are a delicacy. God knows I just want to dive right in and have a bite of that. Next to him stands a border collie, who's, who's in the process of icing pastries on an adjacent counter, situated along, yeah, situated along the room's perimeter. What a gem he is, too. He stands a bit shorter than me and seems to have, have a very fit frame. Okay, in contrast to the skunk. A, fir a fit and firm frame like this is also a treat. I'm a greedy omnivore uh, when it comes to my tastes in men's bodies. Not only do I enjoy a variety of body types, I want to sample them all. The sheer pleasure of, allowing, of being allowed to caress all of that lean, delicious meat on that fantastic frame would only be a match by f feeling all the uh, delicious soft curves the skunk has to offer. What I'd give to bend these two over one, <laughs> over one of those counters and give them an icing, they'll never forget. Wait, uh, f fucking stop! What am I doing? I haven't even talked to these dudes yet, and I'm already having wild fantasies about what I want to do with them. What the hell is wrong with me? Oh, wait, I know exactly what's wrong with me. I haven't gotten off in almost a week. <laughs> um. Uh, between the busyness of moving countless boxes, of uh, buying essentials for my new home, and uh, del diligently counting every single penny along the way, I haven't had the time nor the sexual energy to rub one out. I'm in serious trouble unless I can get a gr- Well, well, uh, here's our new guy. The skunk, uh, yeah, the skunk turns towards me and sits- and set down the bowl of uh, ru sets down the bowl and rubber spatula uh, he was holding. A wide and warm grin spreads across his face. It's a very genuine and friendly smile. I guess he really is happy to meet me. Oh, April, uh, you found me another cute one, didn't you? The collie speaks out while uh, <laughs> while still icing a tray of pastries. He's still facing the tray and car of carb-loaded delights uh, while only offering me an April and April a side glance as he continues his task. Wait, me? He's calling me cute? April implied uh, that some of my workers here uh, were going to be queer, and I didn't expect uh, one to start shamelessly flirting with me the instant I walked to the door. I looked to April to try to find some sort of reassurance here. All she did was roll her eyes at the uh, collie's comment. Was this... was this happening? Uh, have I stepped into the right place of business? Was I being pranked? Uh, where, all of, where are all the hidden cameras? Am I actually uh, about to get trafficked? Trafficked? <laughs> Pat, be nice. Uh, Chester was clear about his stance about you being flirty with our new friend here. The skunk's tone was very firm and... Uh, and but positive. Almost like a teacher trying to positively reinforce good behavior in his students. With the skunk's statement, I was able to glean a quite a bit of information. Neither of them is Chester, by his admission, since the collie is Pat. Uh, that means the skunk must be Dave. Uh, I know, I know. I'm just messing. Uh, how's it going, man? The collie gate... Kali's uh, gaze has now fixed on me when he spoke, his body still positioned towards the pastries. Hi, I'm good. Excited to be here. 
I give Pat a wave, getting a good look at look, good look at his face. He's quite a handsome dog. Makes me a bit a bit nervous. Uh, someone as attractive as him calling me cute. That's nerve wracking. There's no way someone this handsome could think of me. They could think that of me. Maybe he doesn't mean it. Was was he just kidding? That would be a great punchline, wouldn't it? Uh, get the goofy looking. Uh, fat fox's hopes up by calling him cute, then uh, laugh him, laugh behind his back, because he was stupid enough to believe it. This was always a shitty, a shitty game the bullies would play on the queer kids and kids in high school. Now, happy to hear it, bud. I'm Dave, and this goofball over here is Pat. It's great to finally meet you. Welcome to the family. Oh. Okay. Uh, he exclaimed this <laughs> while I'm uh, making his making him smile even wider and warmer. Gosh, it's, he's also incredibly handsome. And gorgeous eyes and cozy plump cheeks. I really feel like I'm out of my league here with these two studs. Studs? Studs. Studs. Look. Look. It's not even late at night. <laughs> it's early in the day. <laughs> I don't have an excuse. <laughs> oh no. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Dave approaches me. I was prepared to shake his paw, but it looks like he wants more than that. His arms are spread wide open. This man's looking for a hug. Aw, oh, shit. This gorgeous tall man is going to bury me in his soft, warm bosom. And the hell of... And how the hell am I going to make it out of this one without popping a boner? Why didn't I rub one out last night? God damn it. Come here, buddy. I'm a hugger. He never breaks that grin of his. Fuck, I guess I have to soldier on through this one. I'm expecting a bit of a casual hug, a bro hug, if you will. Quick, less than two seconds, and all, and we all go on our day. And Dave is on a completely different page, though. My arms are... I open my arms hesitantly, and Dave pulls me into one of the most intimate and tight hugs I've ever experienced. Uh, certainly the most intimate embrace I've shared with a stranger. He holds me tight with a vice-like grip, with my face buried in his chest. God, his chest is so soft. Softer than I had imagined. It has so much uh, cushion and fluff. After a mi after a uh, short moment in his embra in the embrace, he starts rocking me back and forth a bit and gives me back a few sh few slow, gentle rubs. He's a very active hugger, isn't he? I can also catch a small whiff of his unique scent, a skulking behind the layer of pastry aroma and a natural smelling deodorant. Yeah, uh, his scent is incredibly viral, viral. Hmm. Oh, holy fuck, I need out of this hug quick before I, I start poking him. After a few seconds, I make the uh, execu executive decision to terminate the embrace with a gentle yet assertive sort of pull. Not a forceful one, but uh, enough to get the message across. Uh, cool, uh, thanks, Dave. I mutter sheepishly. Uh, it's at this point I'm starting to feel overwhelmed, regardless of my pent-up predicament and Dave is being a lot is being a lot in this moment uh, between the expression on my face of my my face betraying my discomfort and my assertiveness for pulling away from the hug Dave seems to have gotten the message Dave lets out a chuckle sorry bud Chester tells me I need to work on asking before I just go up and hug on a fella I'll be more mindful of that next time upon hearing a hug on Hug on fellas is uh, where I notice a bit of a southern draw. Uh, oh jeez, that's not gonna, that's not helping the aforementioned pent up situation at all. He looks, smells, and sounds hot all at once. Not fair. No, no, it's okay. I promise. It just surprised me a bit, is all. I've never had coworkers act uh, so friendly towards me on the first day. Well, uh, this ain't no ordinary place of work. You'll find that Chester is going to take real good care of you. Ain't that right? He glances over at Pat to coax... To coax... 
coax coax i think that's i think that's how that's pronounced hopefully you know how it is uh <laughs> out a response pat is still diligently attending uh, to his icing uh he's the he's definitely the best boss i've ever had that's for sure his response seems quite natural and not forced he's not trying to flatter wait he's not trying to flatter because the boss's husband uh, had asked the question he truly believes it pat sets sets down his icing bag and turns towards me and uh, entirely offering me his undivided attention i think you're going to have a good time here Pat extends his right paw for a shake, and I oblige. His grip is gentle, yet firm. Nice to meet you, dude. I'm not much of a hugger myself. <laughs> if I was going to hug you, I'd be liable to nip your neck. He, sne he sneered, uh, staring directly into my eyes with a coy smile and a wink. Ah, oh, jeez, he's flirting again, and it's definitely having an effect on me. I feel butterflies in my stomach and my head starts to spin and and swim. With that, my heart flutters. Yep, that's that was a small adrenaline rush as a reaction to his shameless flirt. Looks into Pat's eyes, his pupils dilate and his brow raise. He lets out a the quietest chuckle, just barely loud enough for me to hear. Fuck, he smelled that, didn't he? Uh, the worker canine breeds, yeah, the worker canine breeds always have such an acute sense of smell. Hormones are quite easy for them to sniff out in other people on at this distance, adrenaline being no exception. I really have to be wary around this one. I do my best to collect myself. Uh, yeah, uh, good to meet you too, Pat. We mutually break our paw shake. I turn back to April. She's looking at me with a slight, slight murk on her face. She could have warned me about these two, but she didn't, and it's clear now this was a this was on purpose. This is her little revenge for making her making her run today, run late today, isn't it? That crafty hyena. Chester's over in his office. I'll take you to him if you're ready. He turns to April. You you good with opening the front front uh, the front house front of house front of okay, um while we get them all set up apes, apes first time I've heard that nickname for her, um, Moria's uh, never used it. Oh yeah, I'll be good. She says this with a satisfied grin on her face and a thumbs up. Her negligence has led to my disu discomfort, and all she has to do was a sit back and watch. She walks through the kitchen doors and leaves us to it. <laughs> when you're ready, uh, he's this way. And Dave leads me out of the kitchen into the next room. The door leads to the area behind the counter of the cafe. Okay. Uh, walking into the cafe, I immediately spot pastry display cabinets and espresso machine machines. Uh, yes. A register, even a small flat top grill. <laughs> this is legit. This isn't one of those cafes you'd see at cheap hotels that were only com uh, comprised of an automated coffee brewing machine with with some stale prepackaged croissants. This was a flow blown, full blown operation with fresh food and fresh brews. With each successive room I've toured of the shop, I become more and more excited and express and impressed. It helps put my mind at ease, despite all the tension I've uh, endured so far. We walk around the counter to find several tables and chairs in the dining space. It's quite a, yeah, it's, it's quite a spacious dining area. Uh, just like the, yeah, just like the, the kitchen. And this space was spotless. The tile floor, uh, floors were particularly. Uh, glowing, and all the tables and chairs were very neatly arranged, ready for customers. One thing I found I found curious was that the cafe seems to be entirely closed. Walls completely surround, uh, yeah, surround only the the restaurant. It was almost like a cafe you would find in a mall, perhaps. There's 
There's one door that seems to exit outside, and another that exits into the front of house, as Dave called it. Dave spoke as we continued to walk. Here's the cafe. We got coffee, pastries, and some lunch sandwiches for sale. It's open from 9 to 4 every day. The shop's open. Well, then I would never be able to get to the cafe. Why? <laughs> I wake up at like 4 p.m. <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see about getting you back, uh, here during lunchtime, so you can see how everything flows. Uh, sure, sounds good. Dave continues to walk his way uh, through the space with me in tow. He takes me, yeah, he takes me through the cafe's main rest, main seating area, and to the front, yeah, to the front doors of the enclosed space. Yeah, the bells situated above the door chime, signaling a person has an either entered or exited the space. It really is just like a mall. The cafe ex exists in its, own in its own independent and enclosed space, separate from the rest of the music store, with which is huge. Instruments line the perimeter uh, walls of the, shop, the showroom. Uh, many were displayed up high and out of reach. Guitars, brass instruments, woodwind instruments, and anything else you could think of. In the center of the large space, uh, there are clusters of electronic keyboards, drums, and even a, a couple of pianos. Along one of the back walls, a cluster of shelves houses uh, several records of neatly, all neatly organized. Every product in sight was kept in immaculate condition. The light trickles in uh, through the window of the shop, yeah, of the shop, shine brilliantly on every surface. The floors in this space are carpeted, also kept pristine, just like the cafe. I'm also finding an ec wait, ecle eclectic set of furniture peppered throughout the shop. I am, I am having the troubles. Uh, they range from small bar stools to com to big comfy couches. Uh, lots of places to uh, park their ass <laughs> to park your ass while you uh, sample the merchandise, I guess. Situated across the cafe's entrance is a counter space with two registers and glass display cases. It looks like this area's purpose is for selling smaller merchandise. This is where April's found herself, uh, fidgeting with one of the registers. Impressive, ain't it? Yeah, wow. I wasn't expecting um, uh, such a massive space. Yeah, could you believe this all uh, started with that cafe? No, as a matter of fact, I couldn't. This was us. This whole building used to be a strip mall back in the day. Uh, 20 years ago, when uh, Douglas was just a small town. Uh, this place was a, a happening spot. He, st yeah, he stops in his tracks and gestures around the building, pointing at the inside corners. Not any time. Uh, there would be about four businesses operating until under this rooftop. Uh, they'd be little restaurants, barbecue joints, uh, pharmacies, barbers, even a uh, taxidermist. Uh, up once upon a time. He cl he's clearly taking a trip down memory lane, isn't he? After when uh, Chester and I got married, he wanted us to start a business and pursue my passion for baking. He and I strapped up all the money from our savings, took out a a couple of business loans, and we bought out one of the failing cafes here. We stripped it down, built it back up, and made it our own. He pointed towards the cafe, now behind us. This whole building looked real different back in the day. Imagine if you walked in the front door, but instead of see, Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, what's here now? It just was a long, narrow hallway, with two individual stores on each side. He continued to gesture with his paws to help better it illustrate his description. He's painting quite a picture. After we remodeled and opened the cafe, uh, it turned out we were a big hit. We were making so much moolah that Chester decided to open up a small guitar shop in one of the adjacent units. We wanted to pursue his passion next. Dave point, uh, points towards a space in the, uh, in the next. 
wait, in the shop that I'm assuming uh, used to be that old guitar shop they, they expanded. Okay. As uh, the years went by, he kept expanding and buying out all the other shops until we purchased the whole building. Uh, that's when we started tearing down the walls and such. Chester had to be a real business savvy for all of those purchases. The owner of the mall were quite happy to have us pay rent instead of uh, having our own building outright. But after some persuasions and and business finagling, here we are. Finagling? Does he mean finagling? Finagling? How charming. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, you two could pull that off. It's all stuff that... It's all thanks uh, to that... Uh, Chazibu? No, of mine. Uh, I guess looks can be... I... I... Wait, I just uh, look pretty and uh, bake stuff. He playfully blats his eyes at me to show me how pretty he is. You dang adorable skunk with your heartwarming ass success story. Even after all of that, I'm still left bewildered by the functionally... Wait, by the functionality of this business model. I mean, it must be successful, right? They wouldn't be in, in business if a cafe plus music shop was a flop. I just have a hard time believing it. Maybe after a few shifts, it'll start to make sure make some more sense to me. That's what I'm yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. If it turns out that their whole business model is to just is just a sinking ship, I want to get off of it as soon as possible. And Dave directs me to uh, yeah, directs me to the far side of the building. We pass through rows and rows of merchandise. That's when I notice a rather large stage. It must be uh, four feet high and has plenty of space for a decent sized band. It's adorned with a display of amplifi wait, amplifiers, guitars, and drum kits, all of them on perfect display. And here's the stage. We try to have a concert once or twice a month. Almost, uh, almost always local artists, uh, acts. Uh, when it's not used for performances, we stage some of, uh, some of the expensive products up here. I don't rightly know how to delineate any of the expensive products from ch what's cheaper. They all just look like instruments to me. Granted, the ones on the stage are beautiful, but some of the ones on the floor and the walls display, I guess I have a lot to learn. He directs me up on top of the stage, uh, using a set of stairs. <clears throat> uh, there was a curtain spanning from the ceiling to the floor. Dave pushes some curtains along, uh, walked through, and mentioned and motioned for me to do the same. Okay. Uh, I'll be ending the part here, so I'll see you around, everyone.